Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Arjun Maitra, and I'm a rising senior from St. John's School in Houston, Texas. So the t recent 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar has been dogged by unprecedented negative coverage calling for boycotts and public viewing blackouts. The primary platform for activism against the World Cup was Twitter. So I noticed the intense posts on Twitter, especially right before the event started in November 2022. I decided to combine my interest in natural language processing with sports uh, to dig deeper and explore the geopolitics surrounding the event. So uh, there are three facets to my project. First, a topic modeling analysis to identify the key topics and the primary keywords in the tweets. Second, a linguistic and geographic analysis of the tweet data set to see if there are any geospatial patterns to the movement. And third, a sentiment analysis to examine changes in public sentiment between the 2018 Russian World Cup and the 2022 Qatar World Cup. For each step, I used various natural language processing uh, tools, uh, NLP, are uh, also abbreviated NLP, and NLP is very simply uh, the field of artificial intelligence that enables uh, computers to understand and manipulate human language. So uh, this uh, slide sh simply shows how I created a data set of tweets um, using hashtags capturing the boycott guitar movement. I got these tweets uh, from Twitter API database uh, for the three stages of my analysis. So for the topic modeling, I used an NLP technique called LDA to apply a topic to each tweet and another method called TSNE to plot each tweet as a vector on a graph. Uh, I use these methods to efficiently uh, explore the data set and sample tweets that were designed to be mathematically representative of the entire data set. So I went through these tweets and identified three overlying themes. So first was workers' rights, second was LGBTQ and women's rights, and third was corruption in FIFA and Qatar. So, um, the three topics were used in the linguistic and geographical analysis of the tweets. So first, we were curious about what languages the tweets were most commonly written in. So uh, I used a, a language identifier built on machine learning to assign a language to every tweet, as shown on the slide. And so I plotted this language identification process uh, on a pie chart so English made up just under 50% of the tweets, with French and German coming in second and third. So next up, I decided to do a world map plot that would show if certain topics were uh, more particularly um, common in certain countries. So I used the World Cities and Towns database to sign each tweet a latitude and longitude based on the Twitter location feature. So each tweet was assigned in a red, green, blue color um, based on the weight of each topic in that tweet. Red represents workers' rights, uh, green represents LGBTQ and women's rights, and blue represents corruption. As you can see, the plot immediately shows a heavy concentration of tweets in Europe and North America, and even more details comes when we zoom in a bit. So uh, in the US, tweets concerning LGBTQ and women's rights were big on the East Coast, but workers' rights were prevalent in the Midwest and South. And in Europe, LGBTQ and women's rights and FIFA corruption were the largest categories. So uh, the third analysis was a comparison of different hashtags between the 2018 Russian World Cup and the 2022 Qatar World Cup to explore if there are any major changes in public sentiment uh, between the two sporting events. So I used text blob sentiment analysis package to label each tweet as positive, negative, or neutral. Sorry. For the general term hashtag FIFA, there was a significant increase in positive tweets from 2018 to 2022. Uh, thus, uh, I concluded that the World, Cup re World Cup's reputation was not negatively affected. Uh, 
However, the data told a different story regarding FIFA's president, uh, Gianni Infantino, as he saw an 11% increase in negative tweets from 2018 to 2022. And this really comes as no surprise, as Infantino's name became synonymous with many of the controversies surrounding the World Cup. So uh, one possible limitation I identified during my research was the platform from which I derived my data from. Uh, Twitter is Western biased, so people in, for example, South Asia may have used uh, other forms to e express their activism against the World Cup. Uh, so this project holds uh, many possibilities for future research. Um, one possibility might be uh, in expanding the database used for the topic analysis to include replies and additional languages. Um, this could possibly spawn uh, an additional topic. So I did use these NLP techniques to analyze the boycott Qatar movement, but similar methods can be applied uh, to, in many other ways. For example, to predict the NFL draft, evaluate the success of new products such as the iPhone 15, and analyze political situations such as the 2024 presidential election. So to wrap up, here are my key takeaways. The boycott Qatar movement features a variety of topics, but the primary focus was on treatment of migrant workers, LGBTQ and women's rights, and corruption in FIFA Qatar. The social me media movement was mainly based out of Western Europe and the US, uh, with English, French, and German being the most prominent languages to use the hashtags. While the, and while the overall sentiment of the World Cup actually improved as a whole, the sentiment of top FIFA officials worsened in 2022. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation.